It's kind of a real privilege to be able to go through Romans with everybody, because uh, I'm learning so much from just reading through a Bible. I discovered this week a new name for God. I was reading through and I found out that his name's, where is it? Howard. So a new name for God's called Howard, which is good because, you know, I, and uh, you're all looking at me going, I think I had a dyslexic moment because it says, our Father in heaven, Howard be your name. <laughs> Yes. This morning, this morning I just want to talk about, last week I looked at the fact that we all suffer and Paul's talking about persecution generally in Romans 5 but facts of life are that everybody, whether Christian, non-Christian, goes through times of trials, trouble, storms, battles, whatever words you want to call that, it's kind of summed up in the fact that we all go through stuff. So today I just want to look at the purpose of suffering from Paul's perspective and a biblical perspective on it because if you don't know the purpose, you'll struggle with rejoicing in the suffering if you don't know the why behind what's going on, or at least the, the end goal. Suffering is something we will see all around us. Turn the news on, look around, you've got relative neighbours, friends who are all going through some at different times. They have their own superstitions and their issues and they do things to try and alleviate that. And yet, even for Christians, we go through times of trials and tribulations and the Bible says that it shouldn't surprise us. In fact, realistically, the Christians will tend to go through more, not because God's against them, but because the devil's against them. So we need to take a stand. Often the songs that we've been singing this morning have all been about standing and, and focusing on Jesus. We were, you know, I don't mean to um, encourage people too far, I like to encourage people, but I don't want to worry you. But we've all been through times of suffering, whether that's in the body, physically, in the, the mind, you know what I mean, mentally, or even in the heart, emotionally. We've, we've all gone through times like that when things haven't turned out the way we want, and it's led to a time of battle or struggle. You know, there'll be people that you know right now are going through times going through a time of something going on in their life that we often ask you to pray with them or stand with them and this is where I don't want to worry you and I need to be honest but there will be trouble ahead there will be trouble ahead it's going to happen and it's not a prophetic word it's just that's life until Jesus returns there's always going to be trouble things will never go according to our plan and there's several reasons for that one is because we don't know the future we don't know the people but God says he'll be with us in the situation. And we don't know everything that's coming on. Trouble, battle, suffering will cause us to do one of two things. Either we will run to Jesus to take refuge and to stand in him using his strength. Because he says stand in his mighty power, not in ours. So we stand in his mighty power. So we either run to Jesus or people tend to sometimes walk away from Jesus. The reason why the devil uses trials, tribulations, sufferings and things like that is to try and get people to walk away. But I think that's a, it's, it's almost senseless that people walk away from Jesus. Why? Because they're still suffering. Walk to, into Jesus and at least you know he's standing with you. Walk away from Jesus, you still suffer. And the non-Christians still suffer. People around the world still suffer. Yet the devil will use it as a tactic to try and get people to draw them away from God. Yet... In all those things, we will still go through times of trouble, trials, tribulation, battles, whichever terminology, storm you want to put in there. So if I use the word battle, it incorporates everything. Is that okay? Because it always seems like a battle. So Romans 5, verse 1, we looked at these last week, but to put it into context. It says this, therefore, you've got to read the first four chapters to understand why the therefore, therefore. Since we have been justified through faith, we have peace with God through our Lord Jesus Christ. That's one of the foundational truths that we can have in rejoicing in any battle that we go through. Because we have peace with God. And having peace with God means His Holy Spirit is in our hearts. And the peace of God, not only we have peace with God, but we have the peace of God flowing out of us. Through whom we have gained access by faith into this grace with which we now stand. We also, and we, boast in the hope of the glory of God. Not only so, so it's tying it all together, but we also glory, or rejoice in some versions, in our sufferings. 
And like I said last week, I've never heard anybody say, I'm having a real bad time, but I'm rejoicing in it. I'm partying like it's 1999, which is well gone now, but I'm partying. But don't say that, but we glory in our sufferings because, there's a because there. This is the reason why we can glory in our sufferings, because we know, the problem is most people don't know, we know that suffering produces perseverance, perseverance character and character hope and hope does not put us to shame or disappoint us in other versions because why because God's love has been poured out into our hearts through the Holy Spirit which he has given us that in itself sums up everything when it comes to suffering times of battle and tribulation whatever we're going through that sums it all up but I'm going to just dismantle a little bit and just pull some things out of it so why can we rejoice in our sufferings well, it's what it produces. Nobody gets... You never get anywhere in life without deciding to go somewhere in life. And to go somewhere in life means sometimes you've got to go... If you're going to go on holiday, people go, oh, somebody's been, somebody's going. But there's all that airport issues. You can have a nightmare of airport. I actually love airports. I think it's when I watch people. It's great to see people's veins coming out of their heads and necks and stuff like that. Just watching people, it's quite interesting. Especially when that announcement comes up and you can see people, it's like panic sits in. I just love watching people. But the truth is, you know, if you're going to go on holiday, you've sometimes got to go through a little bit of pain to get where you want to go. And when it's all over and done, you've got to go back through a pain to come on home. So why is it in life that we think that we should have everything easy, calm and quiet, and life should be smooth and easy, without realising that it's actually in the suffering that we grow the most. It's, if you want to do gym or running, you've got to push through the barrier, because you've got to push through some stuff. The difference is that on the physical, we're okay, because we can see the results. You know, some people, they, they go through all different stuff, and, but we need to go through some pain sometimes to get some good gain. But when it affects our heart, or our mind, or our emotions, we think there's something wrong. When in reality, God's just strengthening them up. Now, in any situation, tears are not wrong. In fact, people take it to an extreme on that side of stuff. But we can't let our emotions dictate the terms and conditions of our life. But emotions are real. So the first thing that's produced through suffering, or the first product, or something positive, is that it creates a perseverance within us. Perseverance, it actually means to continue, continued effort to do or to achieve something despite difficulties, failures or opposition. The action or condition or, for instance, persevering steadfastness. So perseverance is mean be steadfast. What's steadfast? Just set your face like Flint and say, I'm going to do this regardless of what's going on. Perseverance is the ability to keep on doing something in spite of obstacles. You'll never get anywhere in life if you can't overcome some obstacles. You know, I, I hate it. In fact, it really grates against me when people give in so easily nowadays because you know, there's so much help available, but that help, I will put this up, the help that's available from governments or councils and stuff like that is only to maintain you in the problem. But to get out of that problem takes perseverance. And it takes somebody who's going to say, I'm getting out of here. I'm not stepping in this situation. But, uh, over obstacles. People who persevere show steadfastness in doing something despite how hard it is or how long it takes to reach their goal. Most people give up on their dreams because they're not prepared to, give, to persevere to achieve their goals. I don't want to point the finger, I don't want to say, but at the end of the day, you think of your own goals in your life that you've aimed at and whether you've got them or haven't got them. Why didn't you get them? Because you didn't persist. Unless God, in my case, one of them, I want, as I said before, I want to go into the military, but God had a different plan for me. So he changed the goal, not me. But we need <laughs> perseverance is just keeping on going. Another word for perseverance, it's sometimes called grit, and it's a leveller. Perseverance is not based on how wealthy you are. It's not based on how good looking you are, or how fit you are, or how wealthy, or how many friends you have, or how many likes you have on social media. Perseverance is something that only you can do, and it doesn't matter who you are. To persevere is down to you and you alone. But if you do persevere, you will always 
reach your goals. People who don't persevere, never. But they're the ones that often talk about what they wish would happen. You know, God's not a God of wishes. It's a God, of pray, a God who answers prayer. But to answer the prayer, you've got to persevere in that. Wishing will get nothing. You know, I talk about people who are Arsenal fans. I'm gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna do it. I hear it all the time from people, I'm gonna do this, I'm gonna do that, I'm gonna... No, don't gonna do it, do it. Yeah. Stop saying I'm going to, say I am doing this. There's a big difference. And sometimes God will allow something to come upon us or to be around us or be there. the devil attacks it. I'm not saying God takes his hand off. I'm just terminology. I'm trying to put it across in a way. Sometimes things happen. The devil attacks. And when you get sick of the devil attacking, then that will cause a perseverance in you to say enough's enough, to get out of that situation. The problem is that some people become comfortable in the situation because they, they don't have perseverance. So where have I got to with perseverance is not just, um, it, it, it is crucial for your spiritual walk, <coughs> but it's also in all areas of our life. Perseverance physically, perseverance, I mean, if you want to see how good you are at persevering, try fasting. I mean, you decide to fast, and it's not even dinner time and you're hungry. I mean, never talk about two days, three days, four days, ten days. I mean, your stomach thinks you've had your head cut off. But you need to persevere through on these things. So, it is spiritual. It's also physical. We need to persevere in the physical. We also need to persevere in what we believe in. And that's for Christians and non-Christians. Even non-Christians need to have perseverance in their life. We're in a culture nowadays where if I don't get it now, now, I want it now, because the government says you can have it now, and if you don't, you know, we can help you get it now. Credit system is about now. Where God's system is, you can have it later. But we want it now. Perseverance is, God, I'll wait for when you bring it into my life. You know, for believers, there are rewards and blessings attached to our perseverance. If you're going to go through some difficult times right now, if you're going through some difficult times right now, know that God is faithful and it may not seem like it. And he, may, he may even feel distant, but he's faithful. See, God would never ask any of us to do anything that he wouldn't do himself. And he sent his son, who persevered for 30 years before he even went into ministry, under the shame of the whole thing that he was surrounded by, and then endured everything, run, run right to the cross and went there for me and you. He persevered. God persevered with <laughs> mankind. He's patient and long-suffering, the Bible says, towards mankind, towards you and towards me. Yet he loves us so much. David, I think, is a brilliant guy. And in Psalm 23, he talks about, even though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, uh, I will not fear because I know that you're with me. In my walk through not camping, there's a big difference. You know, we'll all go through stuff, but it's up to you and up to me about how long we go through something. And I know this, if you want to come out of something very fast, start rejoicing in the problem. Yeah. Start praising in the problem. It's not that the problem will change, but your perspective of the problem will change and the suffering won't affect you as much as what you thought it would. And you'll come out of it yeah. rejoicing because yeah. you started rejoicing before it happened. And in fact, you're probably still in it, but you don't realise you're still in it because you rejoice anyway because you took your eyes off the problem and started looking at Jesus. Amen. And people go, are you all right? Are you all right in this problem? Well, I didn't hide a problem now because I'm talking to Jesus. Well, you must have it rough. I've got it rough worshipping Jesus. I've got it rough just serving him. Hebrews 12 says this, Therefore, since we're surrounded by such a great cloud of witnesses, that is everybody that's gone before us, the... Hebrews 11 talks about the all of faith, uh, all, all the guys that stood there, or women looking over from heaven, it seems, looking at us. Since we're surrounded by such a great crowd of lips, let us throw up everything that hinders us. The things that hinder you may not be wrong things and bad things, it may just be things. You need to get rid of perspective. And the sin that so easily entangles us, get rid of the sin as well. And let us run with perseverance the race marked before us, fixing our eyes upon Jesus, a pioneer and perfecter of our faith. For the joy set before him, he endured the cross, scorning its shame, 
and sat down at the right hand of the Father, uh, uh, the throne of God, considering when Jews took such opposition from sinful men, so that you will not grow weary and lose heart. In other words, you will look at Jesus and be able to persevere through this situation. Because Jesus did it, means you can do it. And he's, if he's done it, and it's in his strength that we do it, that means we will get through it. And you've all got through everything up to press. You survived everything up to press. So you can keep on going. So that's the first thing it creates in life, a bit of suffering. It produces perseverance. The second thing it produces is character. Every great man and woman of God that you can think of right from the beginning of time until even today went through times of trials and tribulations. Every one of them. You talk to anybody who's walking with God, they'll tell you times in their life where they struggled, sometimes where they've gone through big battles, where they've conquered things, and sometimes where people still have limps from the problems that they've had before. Most Christians will have scars on their hearts that nobody sees. Most Christians, if you've been saved more than 10 minutes, will have issues and problems if it's not just an attack of the devil, but it's dying to self. In the early days, that sometimes there's less scars because you've got to lay aside things and put things down. But every man and woman of God from the beginning of time has persevered under trials and tribulations and has stood the test of time. Why? To prove their character. You see, there's many great people around who have great gifts and talents. Yet their character is so flawed. You see it often in news politicians, they're famous for this sort of stuff, aren't they? Because they have no character. Some people, musicians, artists, other people, they seem to be so great and then tumble so far down because they have no character. Do you know God's more concerned over your character than is your gift? Because your character will take you into awesome places in God. But your gift, if your character is not matched up to your gift, you'll just crumble and fall. You'll be a very talented person, but you'll be no use to God. So in our suffering, it produces character because what's in us will come out of us in the suffering. Now, I'm not talking about that little growl that you sometimes get. If, you're in, if you've got too fake and someone's growl, you know I mean? it's kind of, you're in pain, but it's that constant. I see Christians who are just bitter to the heart because of situations that's happening to their life, and that's not a good character. And yet there's other people that's gone through the same thing who are joyous in it and celebrating the fact that they're still alive and still going for Jesus. See, we can't blame anybody else. It's up to us, our character. You develop your own character. Your character is your choice. If you choose to let your character de to be developed, it's like muscles. Muscles do not develop by watching the TV. Maybe that one. But that's it. Muscles do not. Your brain doesn't get any better by watching YouTube clips. <gasps> Read a book, learn something, do Sudoku or something like that, get your brain thinking. Duh. You know what I mean? You need to get this muscle moving, you need to get this muscle moving, you need to get all the muscles moving. But it's your choice whether or not your character is built and strengthened or not. If you want to build a char your character, try this one. I'm sorry. And when it comes to Back up a little bit. When it comes to criticising, grumbling, whining and moaning, keep it stump. Because when you keep it stump, you're developing character. So he's looking at me going, oh. Many people are very gifted but have no character. And sadly, there are many Christians that are very gifted but have no character. But God's not interested in the gift because he's given gifts to non christians He's given gifts to everybody. But he's wanting his children to have the character of Jesus. We already have the nature of God inside us when we get saved. We need to let that nature come out of us. Proverbs 16 and 18 says this. Pride goes before destruction and an haughtiness, which means thinking you're better than other people, comes before a fall. The reason why people seem to rise so high and so fast and then collapse down is because of pride and haughtiness. They think they're better because they've got no character. In uh, 1 Corinthians 15, 33, it says this, Do not be misled. Bad company corrupts good character. I don't know about you, when you were younger, did your parents ever say to you, you've been hanging around with so-and-so again, haven't you? I can tell. You always know who people are rubbing against. I can often tell when people have been with other people because 
They bring some of their habits on because bad company corrupts good character. But it works both ways. Good company builds up character. I can always tell when people spend time with Jesus because you can see or you can sense Jesus' character coming through. But I can also tell when people haven't spent time with Jesus in a long time because all I'm getting is, is sometimes negativity, but the worldly stuff, fleshly things. It may not be wrong, but it's just not the sense of Jesus. So the first pur purpose of suffering is to build up our perseverance. Keep on going. If you want to run a race, if you want to run a marathon, don't try running it in one go. Start off by at least walking to the shop. And maybe jogging a little bit more. And before you know it, you'll be up to 10 miles, 15 miles. But if you never decide to run to the shop, you're never going to get 26 miles, are you? Until you decide to take that first little step. Stop saying I cannot achieve that. I can't persevere to that. Just take the first step, which is a little step. Simple as that. Somebody once told me I hope to start reading a dictionary. This is when I was young and I never did. Sometimes I look back and think, you know what? He had some good advice. Read the dictionary, learn new words. The problem is I can learn new words. They always come out when they should. And sometimes I don't pronounce them. You know, I'm like spell check. The first one that comes into my head, it pops out. So the first reason is that God wants to build up perseverance. The second purpose of suffering is that it builds our character. And the third one is hope. And the Bible says that oh, no hope does not disappoint us. In 2 Timothy 4, 7 and 8 it says this, I have fought the good fight, I have finished the race, I have kept the faith, there is in store for me a crown of righteousness, which the Lord, the righteous judge, will award me on that day. Not only me, but also all those who long for his returning. Paul's writing towards the end of his life. He knows it's not got long. He's uh, in a prison cell. And he said, I have fought the good fight. I have finished the race. He's got there. He's just ready to go home now. And he said, but now there is in store for me a crown of righteousness. You see, we have a hope in the future. We have blessings for the now. And we've got forgiveness of the past. The shame has gone. So we have hope of the future, blessings for today, and the past is gone. And that's why in our times of trouble, we know that Jesus is with us, so we can persevere through things. We can develop our character by choosing to say and do the right thing, even under persecution, trouble and trials. And because we have hope, what's the hope? The hope of what's to come. The hope of, we know that Jesus is with us, but our hope is that one day we'll spend eternity with him. That's the hope, the hope of the future. In Romans 8, 37, it says this, In all these things we are more than conquerors through him who loved us. So now we are more than conquerors. So what's the hope? I'm more than a conqueror means I'm going to get through this. I'm going to get through this. I'm going to stand tall. I'm going to be good in the situation. I'm going to worship and praise him in the situation. Why? Because I'm a conqueror. Any warrior that you've ever seen, there's a big difference between a soldier and a warrior. A soldier will go and do the training he has to do. So that's the Christians who only do what's right when the pastor's there. Yes, sir, uh, I'll do what the pastor tells me. The warrior is one who goes, I'll do what the pastor tells me and I'll do more. Because they want to strengthen, they want to build, they want to encourage. The warrior is the one who stands in the gap for other people. The soldier is the one who helps the people move along. The warrior is the one who says, I will stay here. Why? Because I can persevere. I am a character of strength inside. I am more than a conqueror. I will fill in the gap for Je for, and stand in the way between people and Jesus. Even though he is our mediator, don't get that confused with, I am not a priest. You don't have to come to me to get to Jesus. But there is times when you need somebody to stand in the gap for you. So we are more than conquerors. There's a great verse. That's sarcasm in the Bible. If you've not come across any verses that kind of wind you up, I've got one, I'm going to get into it now. It says this 2 Corinthians 4, 13 to 18 says, Since we have this same spirit of faith, we also believe, therefore, and speak, because we know that the one who raised the Lord Jesus from the dead will also raise us with Jesus and present us to himself. That's the hope we've got. He's going to raise up and present us to himself. All this is for your benefit so that the grace that is reaching more and more people will cause thanksgiving to overflow with the glory of God. Now, I'm not about 
a noise, that's brilliant, but we need to be thankful, thanksgiving for the glory of God. Therefore, do not lose that. But outwardly, we are wasting weight, yet inwardly, we are renewed day by day. This is the verse. For our light and momentary troubles are achieving for us a gl eternal glory that will far outweigh them all. Our light and momentary. Well, compared to God, they are. And Paul says, our light and momentary. Look in Acts, what, what Paul went through is light and momentary problems. Shipwreck, beaten, stone. You know, raced out of place, lowered down a rope out of the city because they're going to kill him. Death threats at daytime, death threats at night time. You know, starvation at some points, well fed at other points. You know, people grumbling, religious people after him. And we think we've got problems. And he says this, our light, a moment of, why? Compared to eternity, our biggest problem is nothing. If your biggest problem is a speck on this top here, eternity past, goes on forever, eternity future goes on forever and your little problem's right there. It's nothing compared to what's ahead of us. Why? Because we're more than conquerors. But not that, it continues. But I like to momentary troubles are, uh, have an eternal glory that will outweigh them all. I mean, all our problems, we've got some ahead of us that will shine so bright it'll become, our problems will become irrelevant. We'll become just a vague dream. So, let us fix our eyes, not on what is seen, but what is unseen. So that what is seen is temporary, but what <coughs> is unseen is to... We need to set our eyes on Jesus, the author and the perfecter of our faith. It says, looking unto Jesus, who is the author and finisher of our faith. That's why we've got hope, because we look at Jesus. And what he starts, he finishes, it says in Philippians 1.6, he says, being confident of this. That's where I get my confidence from. Be confident of this. Uh, this very thing that he who began a good work in you will complete it until the day of Jesus Christ. So that means to me, what he started, he'll finish. Yeah. Yeah. So it don't matter. You know, if people think I'm hungry, it don't matter. If I lose everything, it don't matter. It don't matter what happens. If I go hungry, if I'm well fed, it don't matter. Because I know that what Jesus started, he will finish. And what he's promised me, it will happen. So you need to seek God and persevere in prayer to find out what God's got for you down here so that you can push through with the hope of what's ahead of it. But when you get a promise from God, everything else becomes secondary. That's why you can go through trouble, trials and tribulations. That's why you can sail through the storm looking like you're a complete nutter because you're at the front of the boat going, this is brilliant, while everybody else is thrown up over the side, screaming death and we're going to die. And you're like going, this is great. Because you know you're going to get through it. Why? Because Jesus has promised you, you're going to get through it. He's also promised that he's going to finish something inside you. So the first purpose of suffering, battles, tribulation, is the fact that we need to, it's for our perseverance. The second is for our character. The third purpose for us going through times of suffering is so it gives us hope. How can you have hope in suffering? The truth is that it's only in times of trouble when you can appreciate what God is doing for you. Because when everything's good, you, don't, you just ignore him. You don't need Jesus when everything's fine. You need Jesus when it's a problem. Now, you actually need him in the fine times as well as the not so fine times. It's just that when it's not going so good, that's when you more like to cry out to him. So God just says, you know what? I'm going to bless you, but if you step out for my blessings, you're going to get wet. The umbrella thing, if it's raining, you're under umbrella, you're okay. If you step out, you get wet. But in Jesus, even if we go through a battle, he's going to be with us, he's equipped us, he's empowered us, he's enabled us to stand. Romans 5.5 5 says this, Now the hope does not disappoint us. Why? Because the love <coughs> of God has been poured in our hearts by the Holy Spirit who has now given us. You see, the reason why you can persevere is because the love of God has been poured in your heart by the Holy Spirit. The reason why you can develop character is because the love of God has been poured in your heart by the Holy Spirit. And this can give us hope that no matter what's happening, whether good, bad or indifferent, you can sail through it. Yeah, do you know you can be a warrior for Jesus in a battle and still cry? You can feel heartache but still persist in standing for Jesus and going forward. 
Tears do not mean anything. Don't mean you're weak and it just means you know, you've got a heart you've got your emotions connected. Don't look at me about being emotional, by the way, look at somebody else. But the truth is, you've just got to keep on pressing forward. But sometimes you will feel sad in the problem. But that doesn't mean Jesus has left. It just means he's picking you up. He's carrying you. The analogy of the old footsteps in the sand business, you know, the story, you know, there's two sets of footsteps, but when there's a storm, there's only one, and Jesus said to guy, that's when I carried you. That's great, it's that, it's brilliant, but when I look back at my life, there's not two foot, but it's two sets of footprints, but then there's dragging marks, where Jesus had to drag me through situations, you know what I mean, because I wanted to scoot off somewhere else, you know, you're coming with me. When you gave your life to me, Jesus said, you gave it to me, oh yeah, did you, I'll school you. So where am I? Romans 15 verse 13 says this, May the God of hope fill you with the joy and peace in believing, uh, yeah, and believing, so that by the power of the Holy Spirit you may abound in hope. There's nothing worse than having somebody around you who's very enthusiastic, very encouraging and very happy when they're going through a storm. Because you want a sucky thumb, sit down and let them come to your misery party but they don't want to be there. They just want to carry on, whoa, let's keep going. But your life's a mess. Yeah, but there's better things ahead. God, you know, you're going through trouble. Yeah, but it's not forever. You're in a storm. It's not forever. You know, people give up too much, too fast, too quickly. Jesus said, just persist longer. We've got too many things in place that can get us out of it. Get me out of here, I'm a Christian. Go on. You know, too many people can walk away. There's, there's very little commitment to families, to spouses, to, to people, to jobs, to careers, that sort of. There's very little commitment. See, when you say something, you should honour your word that you said and stand on that. And it takes perseverance. Yeah. It takes courage. And it takes somebody of honour and character. Even when they are being hassled and going through a battle to be able to say, I'm just going to trust you, God, in this. What other verse have got? Romans 12, 12. Rejoice in the hope. Be patient in tribulation. <laughs> There's perseverance for you. Be constant in prayer. Another one, Romans 8, 28. This is a great one, is this. And we know. I don't know if we know, but I know. So I don't know if we know as a whole, but I know that in all things, God works for the good of those who love him, who have been called according to his purpose. See, I've called according to his purpose. That's why I'm going through times of tribulation, trial and, and stuff. And that's not marriage. That's just having somebody alongside me that can stand with me. So don't all look at Joe thinking, she, she's not my problem. She's my strength. All right, dear. <laughs> <laughs> but people blame instead of saying they're my strength. So we know, I know that in all things, God works together for us who love him. So it's kind of been an interesting run through and I literally, there's a lot more I could take into those areas. But the one thing I want to do, we're going to enter a time of, of worship, I'm going to uncover the table and I'm going to encourage you uh, not just to come out and take communion, but if you're going through something right now, <coughs> you're going through a battle, a storm, whatever terminology you want to come, or you may see some on the a concern of the future, someone's coming. Then in the worship, you don't need me to pray for you. Jesus is here by his Holy Spirit. And in the worship, the songs that I've picked at the beginning are deliberate. The songs we've got next are deliberate. Talk to Jesus about it. In You don't have to talk to him in your heart about it. Tell him problem. But then ask somebody. Just say, will you stand with me? And pray. You don't, have to t don't tell them everything. Don't even, don't even ask the person. If they say, will you pray for me? Don't ask them what the problem is. If they tell you, great. But don't go trying to force it. Just, will you stand with me? And just pray with me right now. That's it. Because you're the body of Christ. It's not my job to do it all. My job is to train you guys to do it. And you're the body of Christ. So you can stand with one another. And your prayers are as effective as mine. As powerful as mine. So, we're just going to spend some, I don't know, four, five songs, so there's no rush. But in that, when you've talked to God about what's going on, come and take communion. We've got half an hour, 
So don't rush out, but you can bring it before God. I really sense that God's wanting to touch hearts, but some people rely on other people way too much. And God said, I just want to, I want to talk to you about you. And I want you to talk to me, said Jesus, about you. What's really good on your heart? But I know, and I know that when we start digging into these areas, the one thing God's going to point out in people's hearts is if there's pride there, he's going to deal with that. Why? Because he's got, he wants your character to grow. He wants you to grow strong. And pride and haughtiness is not good for the character. Some people's given up on your dreams and hopes and what you thought God would do and wouldn't do. In this time, why don't you just say, God, is that still available? Is it, is it still there? I'm going through a battle, God, but is my <coughs> dream still on the table? Is my hope still there before you? Is it something that I can reach for once more? You may be looking at someone in the future going, I'm not quite sure how I got, can get through that. Jesus would remind you, you've got through everything up to press. You've overcome lions and bears, a metaphor from obviously David's time. You've overcome these <coughs> things already. So it's time to just go look in the eyes and say, I'm going to take you down. When he growls, just growl back. You know, in Jesus, of course. But in this time of worship, I just want to just say to you, just let me come between. I'm all for corporate. I, I, I think the body of Christ, we're all one, we affect each other and stuff like that. But there's those moments where it just needs to be you and Jesus. It needs to be not what someone else is doing, not what someone else is saying, but you and Jesus. So in this time, talk to him. There's plenty, of, there's, like I said, there's a few songs, and the worshipful songs, but it helps us focus on Jesus. So in this time, if you do want prayer, you grab somebody. <coughs> School somebody says, stand with me. You're all <clears throat> capable.